TKO Fight Sports continue with the trend of having dead set sporting royalty on the panel today. Very excited to announce we have Susie Q. Susie Q, welcome aboard. Great, great to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. No, you're busy in preparation for 15 Feb, but we really appreciate the time. Again, because Moss sort of thing is doing the big intro. So, four time world champion, IBF, WBC, bantamweight title holder, uh, former title holder, WBF, super bantam, and bantamweight title holder, 35 to 27 wins. 26 KOs? No, <laughs> no, I wish. No? Don't 12 KOs. Goddamn Wikipedia, it sucks. <laughs> anyway, heaps of KOs, that works. And a WIBA super flyweight title fight on 15 February. So talk to us about where you're at, status of training, and how excited you are to be throwing down again on 15 Feb. Well, everyone knows how hard I train. I'm probably one of the hardest, um, you know, females who trains, you know, pretty much the hardest um, in boxing. So, this is going, I'm going for my third weight division uh, world title. So this is really exciting. And um, like, I'm a fighter who's never been overfed. Um, so I'm hungry and I just can't wait to get in there and, and win that title. Good. An amazing career Susie Q's had. But one thing I suppose people don't realise is when people travel to Mexico for a holiday, they have an amazing time and they come with great memories. You've traveled three times to Mexico and it's the only time you've had three losses. Um, Talk us through that, like going to a country, going to the Lions Den, fighting against one of their fighters in a parochial Mexican crowd, and arguably two out of those three fights you won and uh, didn't mm. get the win. How do you pick yourself up, get back to work, and uh, keep moving? I think there's uh, look, there's many challenges in in boxing, especially female boxing. So travelling overseas, especially um, near places like Mexico, and um, you know not the safest places in the world mm. either. But it's um, you know you already know before you get there. Um, you know, you, you start a few rounds in the eye. Oh, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. But look, it's all it's all been you know great experience, and um, you know fighting these you know Mexican fighters are really strong and really, really good fighters. So it's you know even though I didn't get the decisions, you know a, a lose is not always a lose, you know, mm. um, because I've learned so much from it, and yeah. you know it's given me a lot of experience, and and they all love me over there. So it's <laughs> very true. Last fight, I actually noticed that in the crowd, you were, you were actually almost the a fan favourite. Most of the support, you're the mm. fan favourite. For 12 years in the sport, as a leading female boxer, the leading female boxer in Australia, it's a great career. And 12 years on, fighting for this world title must be huge. Yes, look, I've been chasing, um, you know, another world title. And, you know, especially in a third weight division. And no one's done that um, since Jeff Fenix. So it's been quite some time. And, mm. um, you know, for a female to do it and, and on Prince Promotions, you know, having a female promoter, Mendez, so... You know, it's it, it's it's this great is how for big women. Prince promotions boxing, is in this so area. You mentioned the word cars driving horns. past Pete the Horn. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. It's unbelievable. Barry, you've been with many fighters for a long time, particularly Susie Q. Talk to me about, I guess, your journey with Susie, her development. You know, the successes that you've had together, and and where Susie is at the start of her career now. Seriously, Susie Q, for me, you know, we've, I've actually sparred this young lady, you know, many, many rounds. Uh, she's the most talented female Australia has ever had. Um, doesn't deserve, doesn't get the recognition mm. she deserves. And this is an opportunity to, you know, break her into the record books to w win th three divisions of world titles. Yeah. And I still believe she's 40 years of age, but as we are talking about before, Susie's a very young 30. She's never been... As, as uh, John said, three losses all by decision, all in Mexico, two of them very dubious. Mm. I mean, Susie's never been Full knocked out. She's, she, she's one tough, classy boxer who, who's going to win this world title, title of Gretel de Paz. And at the weight, she probably should have always fought at 52 mm. kilograms, which is uh, super flyweight. Yep. Um, the best weight, you think? Well, I think, I mean, have a look at it now. She's a couple of kilos over the weight, and she's absolutely flying. Fortunately, you know, with Shanika Johnson who's number five in the world, has, has, has given us some good sparring. But she's also got a, a great young African boy, Will, who's about 75 kilos, who she's been doing a lot of tough rounds with. Oh. So she's going to be in superb condition. And I, I look, Gretel de Paz, number one in the Philippines. And we know what great fighters come from the Philippines. This girl's coming here to win. It's a huge opportunity for her. Mm. Um, I'll be very surprised if Susie doesn't win. And we've already got the IBF teed up to fight for the super flyweight wow, IBF amazing. world title. Wow. And then we'll go for the WBC world title, which then we should make front page of the paper. Taking over. You know? with, exactly. with Gretel, the, the Filipino fighters historically, you know, very high output, good angles, good head movement. 
excellent cardio on principle as well. So again, no game plan given away, but how do you prepare for Susie to combat that sort of a style? Well, you know, to be honest with you, as I said, Susie's been in with the toughest in the world, being the Mexicans at, you know, two and three weights heavier than, mm. than what she's fighting at this fight. So I think Susie at this weight's going to have a big advantage. Gretel de Paz, is, I've watched her on, on tape. She's a classy boxer. She can bang her, but she's, you know, look, it's a massive opportunity for her. Mm. You know, she'll be a star in the Philippines if she does win this uh, world title. But I just think Susie's experience, she's back with Steve Stenborg, who, you know, Steve and I took Susie to the WBC and the IBF world titles. And there's more to come. I really think there's a lot more to come. Good. Yeah. So, Susie, two weeks out from fight night. Um, talk to us about, you know, what your regime, training, preparation, diet, what, what does it look like now? from now to 15 forever to make sure you cheer up to go that night? Well, during training camp, you know, we've been, we've watched um, my opponent fight. So, you know, we've um, been working on our game plan, whether it's bag work, you know, sparring, pad work, it's, you know, with my trainer, Steve Stenborg, you know, we, we do everything uh, to, to the game plan. And um, so all the hard work's done, you know, I'm feeling really sharp and, you know, there's another week to go of um, just, you know, keep it sharp and keep my mind right and focusing on, you know, getting the job done. Good. Josh, I reckon if there's any companies out there who want to hop on board someone mm. who's about to take uh, this world title and move on to even bigger world titles, it's a good time to for sure give these people a call. And mm. what a great sports person to get on, on top of after 12 years working, slogging it out. Absolutely. Um, yeah, time's the right time to hop on the Susie Q wagon and the train. It's, it's right now. <laughs> and as we said, we've got uh, Mendy as a female promoter and it, all, it looks as though it's going to be a done deal that uh, Samantha Bulner could be a female ref referee. Yeah. Um, the board, the boxing board are looking at it and I think they're going to approve it. Um, Samantha's been, she's been judging for many years. She Her has been. husband, mm. Malcolm Bourne, has been one of our top international referees and mm. judges and Sam is uh, very keen to actually referee the fight. Right. So I'm hoping that's going to come to fruition. Let's you know. see. Yeah, and just wanted to mention too, my major sponsor, DNA Recruitment, she's um, obviously, she's um, a female who owns a company as well. So mm. she's getting all behind Women's boxing, so it's great to see too. You're on DNA. There's, more, and there's still more, that, more room in that shorts of yours. Oh, of course there is. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've got to say, Taylor Harris, uh, MC Labor, who sponsor uh, Taylor Harris, have, have got a table for the fight, for the promotion. And John said to me, John Morris, who's uh, one of the heads of MC Labor, Taylor's playing the next day, but she wants to come to the fight. So great. she should be there on the Get on, get on board. Yep. It's going to be an epic night for so many reasons on 15 February. If you don't have a ticket, do get one. Your main event, Susie Q, Gretel, Dipaz, fly, super flyweight title on the line. Susie, thank you for joining us. Thank you, man. Thank you.